All right. Well, good morning, everybody. So happy to see you all here. Um, it's a beautiful day. Wow. Wish we could do the service outside. Maybe someday we'll do that, right? Yeah. We did that a while back, didn't we, where we like did a service out there. Yeah, we should do that again. Just throwing that out there. Um, yeah, so it's kind of interesting that like they have mission, we have mission Sunday next week talking about Pentecost. There's a bunch of stuff that we just talked about in this just a little bit that we've been here that I'm like, wow, God, you must be trying to get our attention here a little bit because what I got here has got a little bit of all that um, tied in. So, but yeah, we've been talking about discipleship a bunch the past couple weeks. Um, that was G- what Jesus said, his la- famous last words, go out into all the nations, make disciples of all nations. Um, and we have a mission statement here. We learn from Jesus so we can live like Jesus. I wasn't planning on it, but it's actually going to be the title of the message. We learn from Jesus so we can live like Jesus. Um, just want to just throw this out there. It's super cool to me that we have this teaching group that we have, like I'm me being part of it, um, able to hear the Word of God from so many different perspectives, different angles. And some of it's like all the same thing, but it's all like different, and you can get different stuff out of it. So to me, it's really cool. I've gotten a lot out of it. I hope you all have as well. Um, So yeah, that being said, let's dive in. We learn from Jesus so we can live like Jesus. I kind of um, looked at that, and I took it a step farther, okay? So we live like Jesus so we can, we learn from Jesus so we can live like Jesus. So why do we live like Jesus? So we learn from Jesus so we can live like Jesus. We live like Jesus so others can know Jesus. Others know Jesus so they can learn from Jesus, and others learn from Jesus so they can live like Jesus. That's the cycle of discipleship basically, in a nutshell. So, talking about discipleship, if we want to do discipleship, that's what we want to be about. We've been talking about doing this. How do we learn from Jesus? That's the first step. How do we do it, practically speaking? What did the first disciples do? What was their life like? I think well, let me just go here. The disciples literally followed Jesus everywhere he went. There was not a moment they weren't there. They listened to him teach, obeyed what he asked. Well, not always. Um, they ate with him. They traveled with him. They even got chased out of town with him. Everything was with this guy, Jesus. That's a disciple. One who is that close to their master in the old Jewish, uh, how they, they would have what's called rabbis. And rabbis was like that teacher that Jesus was. He would go from town to town. He'd go place to place. And the goal was to tell people about the love of God, the word of God. And these disciples literally would follow the footsteps right behind the master to the point where they would literally like if he had a little waddle, they'd pick that thing up. They, if he would, was really bad with puns, I'm just imagining this, they would, ca- ca- you know, they would pick up on that too. They, would, they were able to replicate their master even after their master was long gone. And that is, that's, that's what it looks like to be a disciple. And which brings me to my first point. Time spent with Jesus is the first step to learning from him. The disciples back then, they would follow him around. They would spend all their time with him. Time spent is the first step from learning, to learning, I should say. This is more than just a passing, you know, in passing, saying a prayer, going to a Bible study. Sunday service, saying grace before meals. Not that any of that stuff is bad or not good or anything like that. This is more. We're talking a little bit more than that. Because we are invited into more with our relationship with God. 
how many, actually, quick question here. Any of you, like, graduated college or school or anything like that in here recently? Anybody? Yes? Okay. I, I, I know you did. Not to point you out, but... So, curious question. Um, how long did it take to graduate? And how, out of those five years, how much of it was spent studying? <laughs> A lot. Yeah. So, how much... You know, so it takes a lot, years, hours to become a doctor, a teacher, a a anything. Um, I've, I've been learning Spanish, and that has taken me a very long time. I'm still not very good at it. It takes time to learn anything or to become very good at something. So with that being said, would it be strange to think that becoming like Jesus doesn't happen overnight? by just saying a prayer or just I got that feeling you know I pray I, I was in church and my hands were lifted and the song was great it was just right I gave my life to Jesus it was amazing but learning to live like him doesn't just happen like that and that's what I get to we get to dive into together we must take the time to be with him. So we're told, you know, God is always with you, right? You invited Jesus into your heart. The Holy Spirit's with you. Yay. So isn't he always with me? Yes. Yes, he is. And that's like the best reality about Pentecost, the Holy Spirit coming. God is with us. Yes, that is so true. But there is something to be said about intentionally taking the time, setting the time aside to be with somebody. So I can't know somebody unless I take time to be with them. I've been married to this lovely lady for going on six years, and it's been awesome. But if I didn't take the time to intentionally, you know, send the kids to grandma's house and just hear from her, I would, I, I'd kind of miss out on getting to know who she actually is. And, you know, if I'm trying to learn from somebody specifically, like, if I don't sit down, my attention's on them, my ears are open, and I'm looking them in the eye, my attention's there, I'm not going to hear what they have to say. And I can say that from experience because I can't tell you how many times she's like, well, we talked about that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Who's been there? <laughs> there we go. And this also applies with our relationship with God. Can't tell you how many times I'm like, oh, yeah, you did say that. I, forget. I, wasn't, I don't know if I was paying attention, attention or not. God is a person that can be known and can know. He wants to know you. He wants to know you. And he wants to be known by you. So with keeping that in mind, Jesus said in Matthew 6.6 6 about going and spending time to be with God. But when you pray... Go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. It sounds kind of like a date to me. No, that's, that's just me. Jesus would constantly go away from everybody to be alone with the father. He would, you know, middle of night, early in the morning, Sometimes it was midday. It was a big crowd during the whole feeding of the 5,000, you know, where Jesus broke the bread and the fishes and passed them out. After that, he said, okay, um, homies, you go on the boat after me, and I'll wait here for a minute. They all left and just took a deep breath. Okay, Father, here we are. It's just you and me now. You ever wonder what those times were like? I'm going to give you a hint. You can find out for yourself. That's the point. So we'll get into that a little bit. So how do I spend time with him? 
practically speaking, how, how, what does that look like for me? I'm a dad. I work a job. I work 40-something hours a week. I'm up ridiculously early in the morning, and I'm beat by the time I get home. I got kids running all over the place. I got an amazing wife that I, we get to do a lot of stuff together. I'm a busy human being, and that, that probably goes for all of you. We're, we're Americans. We're busy. Got a lot to do. So how do I spend time with God? What does that look like? I'm going to touch on two basic principles, tools, and I don't know, this is what we have to communicate with God and for Him to communicate with us. The beauty of this is I'm not going to tell you how to do it. That's the beauty of God and relationship with him. It's not religion. Thou shalt come into these doors at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, and thou shalt give your time this way and that way and that way. That's not our God. Can I get an amen for that? That's not our God. That's not our God. He's, he he's, wants to meet you where you are. He loves you. He created you on purpose, and he has you in the place you're at for a reason, and he wants to meet you there. So the first thing we can do in spending time with him is called prayer. Who's heard of prayer before? Who knows what that is? Okay. Big idea, right? This big lofty idea, but I'm going to try to break that down just a little bit. Prayer is the place where I am intentionally bringing myself before God. It's kind of it. Prayer is truly simple, but is so easy to overcomplicate. So prayer starts by faith. Since I can't, I, I don't see God, you know, standing right here and, oh, hi, God, you know, nice to see you, nice to meet you. It's not like that. I believe that He is. That he is the Creator. He's the great I Am. All the stuff we sung about. And I'm going into His presence believing that He's there waiting for me, wanting to hear from me. And then I proceed to thank Him, tell Him what's on my heart, my mind, cry to him. Yeah, I do, I've even yelled at him before. Like, hmm. It's been a couple times, actually. Believing he's there and that he really does hear me. In Psalm 116, it starts off, I love God because he's heard my prayer. And so that's, that's huge. That's one of the reasons why I love him and I could keep, keep believing him. But when you step out in faith this way, praying that God is there, I'm going to just approach him. I, I don't have it all figured out. I'm not a good prayer. I, I don't have the cool language. I don't know how to, ooh, to get in the mood. I'm just here. God, I'm here. And, you know, here I am. You come to him in faith like that, believing that he's there and that he hears you. Scripture says in Hebrews 11:6. Jeremiah 29, 13, and Matthew 6, 6. Just a couple verses there that God will reward that faith. Disclaimer. Psh, big letters. God is not a vending machine that you put the right prayer in and you'll get exactly what you want. I've prayed that way before, but that's not him. Again, who, he's a person who wants to be known and he wants to know you. This is not the purpose of prayer to get what we want. Prayer is our avenue directly to God. A perfectly 100% safe place to make my heart known to God and for God to make his heart known to us. So yes, Ask for your needs when you pray because he does care about those things. He really does. But I encourage you, take it a step farther than the list of things that we need God to answer. Take it a step farther. T tell him how your day went and be still. Listen. Ask him to show himself to you. 
laugh with him, cry with him. Literally, like, not, not just some idea, like, drive down the road, like, after work. God, today was a freaking awful day. Who's done that before? Like, I've had hard days, and he cares, and he wants to meet me there. This is part of that walking with Jesus, that learning from Jesus. And I guarantee you, you keep seeking him like this, you keep coming to him like this, you will be amazed at how he responds. I just want to share a really quick story. Um, I was working for a construction company, and we were down in the Kohler foundry redoing some machinery stuff there, and it's dark, it's dirty, it's hot, and the guys we're working with are rough, they're tough, they're, you know, not, not your typical churchy kind of people. And I was there, and I'm just like, hey, excited for Jesus, and I'm trying to tell them about this faith that I have, and they're just, they're not having any of it, and day after day, I'm trying to work hard, trying to be a good kid, and I'm just, one day, I just had it. Really, I'm just like walking through. I have my safety glasses on, good thing, because there's these tears coming down. I'm just like, God, like, I really feel like you just left me here. Like, I'm trying, but I, 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 need, I need to know you actually love me. And literally, it's an iron foundry, so I trip over some iron slag that came out of their melting thing that they, I don't know what it is. It's like this molten stuff, and stuff is flying out of it. And here comes a splat on the ground. It cools in the perfect shape of a heart. Literally, that big. I have it on my desk still. Um, and I was crying before. I was really crying now. Oh, God, you love me. Ah. <laughs> You'll be amazed at how you res- he responds. I guarantee you. You just go to him by faith. So that's prayer. The next thing I want to talk about is his word, the Bible, Scripture. Here's a quote from Justin Peters. If you want to hear God speak to you, read your Bible. If you want to hear God audibly, read it out loud. Amen. (laughs) That's good. That could be a message right there. Prayer is our main form of communication to God, but Scripture, the Bible, is God's main form of communication to us. Not that, not to say God doesn't communicate in other ways. These are like the, I'm just talking about basic, basic, basic. Okay, let's not overcomplicate this. Prayer, me talking to God, His Word, boom, He's talking to me. And both are equally as important in our relationship with God and in learning from Jesus. I haven't talked a lot about the whole learning thing yet, but it, this is all I got to lay a, a little bit of a foundation here before we get into that, okay? We all good? You guys following along? Making sense? Okay, great. Cool. So here's another quote, and this one's from Charles Spurgeon. When he was asked, what is more important, prayer or reading the Bible? He said, which is more important? Breathing in or breathing out? I really like that. That's a really good quote. I might get that in a tattoo or something. That's really good. God's Word is full of God's thoughts, His plans, His warnings, correction, guidances, and His promises. God's Word is how we know who Jesus is in the first place. Like, how would I even know who he was if I didn't hear John 3.16, for God so loved the world, right? And it is where we can look and see how Jesus lived, how he loved, how he walked, and how he talked. It's how we know about salvation, God's will for us, freedom, what love looks like, true justice, the beginning, the end, all of that is in the Bible. The Bible is, if you will, 
God's personal journal and biography that he's given to us to read and to know. It's full of his thoughts, his personal life, as a journal, a biography, the big picture. It's truth. It's the definition of the truth. It's a letter from God containing what he said, what he will say, and what he is saying today. It says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you want to learn from Jesus, you've got to know what he is saying. And I don't know about you, like all this talk about, like, I just want to read his Bible, the Bible more. I want to know, what, God, what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? What, who, who are you? Like, I think I know you. I've thought I've known him for a while, and each, like, I don't know, probably a month or two goes by, and I'm like, huh, I, really, I guess I really didn't know you that much. It's like, um, it's just like anybody. He's a person. Like, I've learned every year I find, like, oh, my goodness, I've been with you for a long time, and now I know this much more about you. Wow, that's, that's incredible. You know, there's more that I could say about the Word of God, more that I could say about prayer. Like, I could be here till next Sunday talking about it. I mean, I like to talk about stuff too. Like, ask Andrew. Like, I work with him. I like to talk. And I could be here for a long time. There's a lot to be said. But I'm going to kind of leave it right there and kind of go into that a little bit. So, we learn from Jesus so we can live like Jesus, right? We talked about learning from him, reading his word, me going to him in prayer, opening myself up to hear what he has to say. And I want to talk a little bit, I didn't actually put this in my notes, but just a little bit about what that might look like for you personally. I personally, I get up in the morning, that's like the first thing I do is I go there, I open up the Word of God, I start praying, telling Him how I, like, just show yourself to me, help me today, like, oh, show me what you got for me in your Word. And that, that's worked for me for a long time. Um, and maybe you have a, maybe you can't get up early in the morning, but you can, right after work, maybe during your lunch break, you can take a little bit of time and set it aside. Barry and I were talking a little bit um, right before service, actually, about, like, how the different walks, like, they look different. He was explaining, like, what his routine was a little bit. I'm like, that's, that's really cool. Thing is, main thing, may own it. Make it yours. What can you do? What time do you have during the day? Is it you have a long commute? Maybe you turn the Bible on your car and listen to it. Maybe it's through, like, at the end of the day, right before bed, you have time to sit down and read, and you have some time to pray. Make it yours. But I want to encourage you to go into that place, learn from God, hear from Him, and be known by Him. Am I making sense here? Are we still, still tracking good? Am I doing okay? I keep talking even if I wasn't, so. <laughs> so. We learn from Jesus so we can live like Jesus. So how do we live like Jesus? That's the next question. How do we live like Jesus? So we talked about the uh, first step to learning from Jesus is spending time with him. Well, time spent with Jesus is the first and the last step. It's how we learn. How we learn from him is spending time with him, but you don't ever graduate from that. So, you know, I, it doesn't stop when I leave my room from praying. It doesn't stop when, okay, the Bible, I put it away, I'm done praying for the day. That's not where it stops. That's actually just the beginning. It's now I leave that place. I'm no longer a student sitting in a classroom. I'm now an apprentice. I'm now a, I now have to get my hands dirty and practice what I've learned. Um... It was really cool. I got to attend a YA graduation thing this past week. So cool to see all these kids um, just not just sitting in a classroom, but spending time going to different jobs in our community, learning firsthand what's it going to look like when they graduate and start this job or that job. So it's super cool. 
And it's much the same way with us, with God, and with learning from Jesus. We have the time sitting with Him, learning from Him, reading, and all that stuff. Then we go out. It's the other six days where we get to learn and practice and apply. I get to now go out, but I don't just go by myself. I'm actually going with my teacher. Remember, Jesus doesn't leave us, right? So I get to go with him and practice what I've seen and heard. And so with that being said, I want to look at two verses in the Bible that I believe summarize this pretty well. I'm just going to look at my notes here. I didn't bring my tablet this time because I always get, it gets wonky. It like clears on me. It like goes to edit mode. I can't scroll. The screen closes. This thing is pretty simple, but I'm not, I can't push a button on there. So it just kind of is. So Romans 12, 1 and 2. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he's done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is the true way to worship him. So, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. God changes us this way. We th- change the way we think, we change the way we live. Barry talked about that really well pretty recently. If you didn't hear that message, it was really good, like really good. Um, so I'm not really going to dig into that too much. So, but the whole give your bodies to God part, yeah, can you keep that up there for a little while? I'm going to kind of bounce back and forth. Thank you. You're awesome. Give your bodies to God. Like what, what's that all about? This is when Jesus and I begin to move into my heart and thoughts, my inner being, and now I invite him into my outer being. I'm going to say that again. So first I let him in here, let him in here, and let him out here. Make sense? A little bit? Tiny bit? A lot? I'm going to go into there a little bit more. So he says, I begin to do this. I begin to do this outward expression of what God has done in here as I see and learn what God has done for me. That's what the Word of God is all about. How can I know what he's done for me if I don't go and find out and hear from him? So what has God done for us? What has he done for you, for you, for me? So this, this uh, verse was from Romans, and Paul throughout the book of Romans has explained from the beginning he, how we were lost, how we were separate from God, dead in our sins, and how Christ Jesus came and he died for us while we were in that, in that state of being lost. And he goes on and on about the mercy and the love of God that he poured out on us and ending the old life, beginning a new life, adopting us as his children, giving us his Holy Spirit, making us more than conquerors, giving us all the promises that are found in Scripture. These are just a couple of ideas that are just found in just in one book in that Bible. Um, and I want to dig, uh, dig into that a little bit more. So we're just going to read like two portions of, I, I got a bunch, bunch of verses here, and I just want to kind of This is what God has done for us according to the Word of God. You guys ready? Set? Go. Romans 5, 6 through 8. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, but though maybe perhaps someone might be willing to die for a person who is especially good, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Can somebody say amen? That's really good news. Next verse. Here we go. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them death, now God's wonderful grace instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's also good news. Can we get an amen for that? Thank you, Jesus. Next verse. Here we go. 
Sin no longer is your master. I'm going to say that again. Sin is no longer your master. For you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. That's good news too. Next verse. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. That's good news. Thank you, Lord. Next verse. When we were controlled by our old nature, sinful desires were at work within us. And the law aroused these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds resulting in death. This is explaining how we were apart from Jesus. But now you have been released from the law. For we died to it and are no longer captive to its power. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way of living by the Spirit of God. That is also really good news. Next one. We only got a couple more to go. How is this? Is this good news? This is really, really, really good. Romans 8, 1 and 2. So now there's no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. That's good news. And I believe this is the last one. Yes, this is the last one, but this is a long one. This one's also really good. Here we go. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, angels, demons, neither fears of today or worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. That is really, really good news. I didn't even have to take notes for that. That's just the Word of God. Just copy and paste. That's how, that's, it's, it was easy. <laughs> Besides these verses that I just wrote, um, read, Paul in Romans goes on to explain how all who believe and receive Christ Jesus receive the promises that God made to his people, how he's chosen us, adopted us into his family, given us the Holy Spirit, all this stuff, giving us mercy when we didn't deserve it. This is really good news, isn't it? This and more is what God has done for us. Literally, like, I will spend my entire life exploring that. What has my God done for us? And I will spend the rest of my life telling people about it. That's it's, it's why I'm here. I don't know how many of you heard my story. If you haven't heard it, just ask me. I'd like to talk about it. But I shouldn't be here today. So for this reason, all that we just talked about, Give yourself to God. Give yourself to Him. Let yourself be an acceptable sacrifice to Him. This is truly the way to worship Him, it says. So throughout your day, this is what it looks like, basically. Throughout your day, at home, work, school, wherever, allow your teacher... Jesus, to teach you how to love the way that he has loved you. That's what it means. We learn from Jesus so we can live like Jesus. So I just want to kind of, so we talked about for myself learning from him so I can live like him. Like this is all, all that stuff I, we, we just read. That's really good news for me. But let me tell you, it matters. It really matters that we really live like Jesus and learn to be his disciples. Not just for us, but specifically for those around us. Because, let me just tell you, Jesus, the name of Jesus has been thrown out as a curse word by so many people. Because they haven't seen or experienced the real Jesus through his disciples. It's the case for a lot of people. Many don't think that there is any power in his name. 
because they haven't seen many people who claim to truly know Jesus, much less live like him. So why should I believe in your God? Like, there's, there's no difference here. Many real Christians also have forgotten the love, the power, the freedom of Jesus because we've gotten too busy and we've pulled away from spending time learning from him. I can say that from experience. This isn't to guilt or shame any of you because I feel like it just went, woo, just got heavy all of a sudden. It's not for guilt or shame. Remember, there's no condemnation. But I do want to encourage you to receive the loving correction or conviction from the Holy Spirit if that's what you're feeling right now. Receive that. Dive into it. And don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Because Jesus isn't saying, you know, shame on you. I told you so. That's not him. We can do this. We can lear- learn from Jesus. We can. Not perfection. I'm not talking about perfection. I'm not talking about literally like. Oh, oh I'm perfect. Yay. No, I'm talking about I'm a real human that God loves and died for. And he wants to live through me. And he wants to live through you. No matter what you've done, no matter what your mistake has been, no matter how on course or off course you feel like you are, God can, he wants to, and he will work through you. That is good news. That is good news. So, yeah, not perfection. So the last thing I want to say about learning from Jesus is that honestly, it might be hard, and we might really not want to do it. I'm saying that from experience. Um, Barry, could you come up here real quick? Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, um, I just want to share a couple of, couple of experiences I've had, a little moments where God was like, okay, um, let me just tell you, like the, that morning I was like in my room, yay, God, Jesus, woohoo! I was like on fire. I was excited. Yay. And I was going for a walk. We just had Dominic at the time. He was one or two, something like that. Walked down to Red Arrow Park. I was just enjoying the day. It was fall, and it was super nice. Um, And then this lady came up with her little kid um, and just started playing on the playground, too. Um, I was, like, in a good place in my head, and I was like, this is really nice. But then somebody, I get this way sometimes, just letting you into a little bit of my life here, Okay. If my experience is super, super good and then a human being walks in, I feel like the force has been disrupted. Like, okay, like me and my kid will enjoy our time over here. You go over there. Sounds good. Thank you. Might be really bad. I'm just telling you the truth, okay? This is me, okay? But I felt the Holy Spirit saying, don't run away. Like, be there. Let your kids play together. Enjoy. It's like, okay, sounds good. Let's let's do this. So I just kind of just like, hey, hi, how's it going? Great, yeah, great day. Kids are playing, stuff like that. And I just felt something on my heart that I just felt super heavy, like borderline depressed in just like a split second, just like, ugh. And just a still and quiet voice was said, this is how she's feeling, and I need you to talk to her. Okay, great. First, I didn't even want to be a runner. Now I got to talk to her? Shoot. I really don't want to, Lord. It's going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to look like a goofball, you know? Okay, let's do it. So I just kind of, a little bit nervously, just kind of was like, hey. Like, I don't know. I just got this impression. Like, I, I, I needed to just ask you, how you doing? And... Just like, I'm fine. Yeah, it's okay. I'm, I'm doing great. I was like, I, I know you don't know me, and I don't know you, and it's the first time I ever met you. I don't know if I'll ever meet you again, but I just really felt impressed to tell you that like, 
you matter. Your life matters. And, you know, I didn't always think that. I didn't always believe that. At 14 years old, I attempted suicide. And I shouldn't be here, but Jesus came and he saved me. He brought, brought me life. He brought me joy. He forgave all, all the wrong stuff I've done. He's given me new life, and I'm here for a purpose. And I just want to tell you that he has a purpose and a plan for you, too. She just broke down and started bawling. And she said, actually, yesterday I wrote in my journal how I want to end my life. And I was just like, wow. I never would have known that. Like, you seemed like you were fine and dandy. You even told me you were fine and dandy. I believed you. What would have happened? The conversation went on, and it, and it, it, it wasn't like, you know, fireworks went off, and, you know, there's a light, ah, and she was, like, dramatically transformed or anything like that. It wasn't that. But what would have happened if I wouldn't have said anything? What would have happened if I would have went on the other side of the park because I didn't want to be around that person? This is what it means to give our body to Jesus. So I want to talk about another experience. Um, I get a lot of these where, like, he asks me to do stuff I don't want to do. Like, it's like, why don't you just ask me something like, yeah, I'll gladly go, I don't know, eat some cake or something. I don't know. So... <laughs> I was at work, and um, it was Monday. We um, had two guys who started, and one of the gentlemen who started, he looked a little rough around the edges. Um, has long hair and a ponytail, and I don't know. He just kind of looked, I don't know. I was, I literally was judging him. I'm just going to be honest. It's like, I don't know about this guy. And I was doing my work, and I had my groove going, and they said, hey, you're going to, like, oversee this guy. We don't really have much for him to do cause since he's new. We just need to kind of keep him busy for today until we're able to figure out what to do. I'm like, all right, fine, I'll do it. Dude was super hard worker, let me tell you. He was just running around like, he was just like, what can I do next? What can I do next? And he was just giving her. I'm just like, okay, come on, dude, seriously, calm down. And he was just kind of following me around. I'm like, well, as far as a worker goes, he's kind of great, but so I don't know. I noticed uh, at the end of that day and the next day, a couple of days in a row, he saw him you know, come out of the doors for work and he just started walking. I'm like, hmm, doesn't have a car. Okay. I don't remember what the day it was. I don't know how long it was after that. And I just felt the Lord tell, like that same voice I heard. It wasn't like, thou shalt go give, the, you know, it was, I think I should give this guy a ride. Ask him where he lives and just, Give him a ride. I was like, okay. I don't know if I want to. Fine, I'll do it. Just, he started walking. I rolled my window down. I'm like, hey, dude, where you live? He goes, yeah, over here. I'm like, oh, shoot. That's right on the way to where I live. I'll just, you want to take a ride? I'll just drop you off. And he's like, oh, great. He sits down and he sees I got a little Bible in there. And he goes, dude. You got a Bible. And he just, we just started talking about God and Jesus. And that's the start of a really cool friendship. The guy's Dave, by the way. He's a really good friend of mine now. And he's a co worker of mine. And yeah, makes a difference, doesn't it? I got a really good friend out of it because of it. So let me ask you that little thing where you feel God asking you to do this because think Jesus would do it, it does make a difference. Can you get an amen? It does make a difference. Gosh, I thought this part wouldn't be hard. So recently, someone we worked with tragically passed away not that long ago. And great kid. Um, he, I think he was 22. At the, I think he's 22. And he worked for me. He, um, super worker, just a really cool guy. I really enjoyed the time that we got to have him with us. Before he passed, uh, a couple months before he, he got a different job somewhere else. And so he was, it was his last day here and he was, he was packing his stuff up, getting ready to go. And I felt that same little voice. 
need you to tell him about me. I want you to pray for him. I'm like, God, I really do. That means I'm going to be home late. It means I'm going to, you know, this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, God, darn it. All right, fine. I'll do it. So I stopped and just like, hey, dude, like, first I just, like, as, as your boss, I've really appreciated working with you. You've, you're amazing. Like, I know you've had to go because, you know, situation, circumstance, it's great. Um, so I just hope that everything goes super well for you. I pray that, well, actually, can I pray that everything goes well for you right now because I feel like you need prayer right now. And it's like, I'm good. But then the next words out of his mouth, it's been tough. It's been hard personally and stuff. And he tells me just a little bit. He, again, no fireworks, no light. Oh, it's not like the movies. The movies are great. We should watch them because they're inspiring. But it's not always how it is. But I just said, dude, let me tell you about my Jesus. Because he helped me when I was, it was hard. He still does. Like, I have hard days too. And I just got to tell him a little bit. And got to pray with him. He thanked me, super appreciated it, and gave me a hug. And just like, yeah, this, is, this was great. Thanks. And, you know, I hope we can talk again. And he passed. Not that long ago. That was my last encounter with him, though. So did, it, did that encounter change anything? I don't know, on his end. I, I, I really don't know. But I do know from my end, I was obedient to God. So I can't help but be hopeful that the love that I was able to give to him, the truth that I was able to tell him, made some sort of a difference. Had I not done anything or just was like, you know, not this time, not feeling it, I really want to just go home and eat dinner. I'm starving here. I'm tired. <laughs> it would have made a difference for sure. I would have missed out. <sighs> but more than that, the gift of truth and love that I was able to give, he would have missed out on. I don't know if he's ever heard the message of Jesus. But I had the privilege of giving it to him that day. Living, learning from Jesus matters. Being his disciples and your interactions with the people around you matters. Learning like Jesus to live like him the other six days matters. Spending time in the presence of Jesus with his word, praying, it matters. For you, yes, it super matters but also for the multitude of people who've never heard his voice, who don't know what love looks like, who don't know that they have a reason why they're here. It matters for them. For people who've never seen love or grace from a person before, a person who sees God as this angry father figure who's ready to just smite them the second they mess up. It matters that we show them something else because that's not our king. So I didn't share all those stories because, like, I got it all figured out and I do it right all the time. Because there are stories I could tell that I have missed out. That I've lived in fear, hid from someone, loud bitterness, or my emotions to have the final word. <laughs> I'm sharing these things to empower you and to encourage you that we can live this out. It doesn't take someone who's been to Bible school for years to do this. It only takes someone who's spent time in the presence of Jesus to do this. And that can be you. That can be you. That can be me. Though I'm broken, God is able and He wants to work with me and through me. And those times I failed, it's not the end. I can go back. I can say I'm sorry. I can do the right thing. I can forgive that person. I can talk to that person. I can forgive myself. I can look at my story and say, okay, like I, I, 
I need forgiving too. I need love. I need kindness. I need grace too. It's not the end. <sighs> wow. And can I tell you something? That is the glory of the good news we believe. That's the gospel. That's what discipleship is all about. We can start learning from Jesus right now. Now is the uh, one verse from the Bible that says, Now is the favorable time. Now is the day of salvation. Today. Today can be the day. I want to encourage you, if you haven't ever sat down to learn from Jesus, I want to encourage you, take this, what, you're, what, what you've learned today, and take it home. Begin to learn from Jesus. Maybe it's not big and grandiose and, gl and glorious, but I have... I have five, ten minutes. I can sit down and open my Bible. I don't understand all of it, but I can, I can read it. And I can ask the questions. I can pray. Whatever it looks like to you, you can start today. And those of you who have done this before, who have walked with Jesus for a while, who know what his voice sounds like, who know his word, I want to encourage you, refresh that. Put a little extra spice on that and come to it with a, like, this is my first time, kind of like faith. Because he wants to meet with us, and he will. So I just want to pray with you guys real quick. <sighs> Thank you, God, that you love us. You want to know us. You want us to know you. Thank you for dying for us, for rising again and giving us your Holy Spirit to live with us forever and ever. Through that Holy Spirit, empower us to live this life of learning from you to live like you. That's Jesus that you would touch every person here individually, the people watching online, where they are at. If there's conviction, may the truth, love and truth come to them and reveal to themselves who you are in that place. I said we'd be motivated, we'd be excited to go and spend time with you. Just like breathing in and breathing out that may prayer and your word be like that to us. Bless everyone today. Thank you that your spirit goes with them. Ask for protection over them. Ask that today would be grand and glorious. Thank you for giving us the weather. And ask that we would just enjoy it and glorify you through it. In your most precious name. Amen. You all have a wonderful day.